Hi again, everyone. We're glad you've joined us for the Last Mile Show. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State returned home to Stillwater for an encounter with Northwestern State of Louisiana, and the Cowboys prevailed 24 to nothing. An impressive win for Oklahoma State. It's my pleasure to welcome alongside the head coach of the Cowboys, Les Miles. This Northwestern State team won on the road in overtime at TCU last week, but this week your squad played well, especially in defense and special teams, and got an impressive victory at home. We uh, didn't know exactly uh, how good this ball club was coming in here. They just um, won uh, on the road at TCU, and TCU was a really good football team a year ago. And um, it was important that uh, you know we, we got on the right track so yeah. that uh, we could prepare ourselves to play in the Big 12 Conference. We'll have highlights of the Cowboys in Northwestern State from Lewis Field when the Les Miles Show continues after this. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Cowboys entertained in Northwestern State on a day that was previously an open date on the Cowboys schedule. This game replacing the Northern Arizona contest, which was canceled. The walk once again well received, Coach Miles. We expected with fall break that the uh, crowd might be a little smaller, but uh, the walk was, uh, was great. Anybody that was uh, preparing to play in that game uh, really gets fired up for the walk. Obviously, the crowd was there and enthusiastic as we take the field. Beautiful night for football, and the Cowboys get the football to start the football game, and there's the beginning of what was a pretty good night for Terrence Davis Bryant. Yeah, Terrence is um, a fearless returner. The, uh, we, we, we get our off-tackle play going, and it uh, looked like to me that Tatum Bell was running hard. Um, uh, we, we're having some uh, production offensively to start the, the uh, game. Uh, nice little run by Tim Burrow. Cowboys moving the ball down the field. There's Rashawn Woods with one of his 10 catches on the night. Yeah, Rashawn had a big night, and we expect him to have big nights from this point forward. Uh, we uh, mishandled that ball and get penalized on that, and so then now we back up. I, I believe that that may have been even a first and five that uh, ended up being a first and 20. Cowboys forced to punt the ball away. Boy, John Lewis almost made a whale of a play here, didn't he? It's a great play. I, I have to believe that the official made a, uh, a conscientious call there, even though it looked and appeared from our end that uh, he had not, that, uh, that we did permit, uh, prevent the ball from going in the end zone. Our defense is playing lights out. Uh, don't, don't rush the football against us. Uh, in this game because uh, there's always going to be people around the ball. I mean, they're, they're, uh, their pursuit is good and, and they're uh, delivering blows when they arrive. Didn't take long for Northwestern State to be forced into a punting situation. Your offense backed up a bit for this drive as the Cowboys took over at their own 17-yard line. Rashawn is so big and strong, you, you don't realize it uh, until you see him run some of these uh, receptions that he has. Uh, nice run by Tatum, um, uh, a deep throw that uh, we, we tried to get uh, Rashawn over the top. And then during that time, we get an, an offensive lineman that clips. And so now again, it's third and 18. Uh, those uh, that we would, we'd like to not uh, run into, but then we pick it up and we're on the move again. Unfortunately, the drive stalled and the Cowboys are forced to kick the football away. Scott Elder with another solid punt. He's among the national leaders in punting and uh, Northwestern State forced to take over deep in its own territory. We jump ahead to the second quarter and, and coach your defense just played well throughout. More examples here on this series. The, uh, we never let uh, Nall get into a, uh, a consistent groove. He uh, takes a quarterback um, draw here and does a good job with it, but uh, he, he was uh, constantly pressured and uh, even when he got the balls off you know, comfortably, there was good coverage. In fact, Nall, the LSU transfer quarterback, was just 10 of 25 for 67 yards after throwing for more than 300 yards against TCU last week. How about this determination by T.D. Bryant? It's coach? really interesting because we, we pressure the punt and T.D. gets a nice return and those two things exactly what you want. John makes a nice adjustment on a ball thrown back behind him. Uh, John Lewis um, uh, had some uh, had nice receptions and productions for us in this game as well. And from this point thereafter, nothing but power football. Rushing plays for the remaining 44 yards on this touchdown drive. Well, what was happening is, is they were they were uh, taking Rashawn out of the game and trying to uh, cover us on the perimeter. As you can look at the the uh, tight shot there, there's just not a lot of guys around the ball. So we're gonna we're gonna give the ball inside, and then uh, they started hugging up inside, and we pitched it out there to Tatum. And uh, now we're on about the five-yard line, and, and uh, Tatum uh, powers inside the one, 
and uh, Asso sneaks it over for the touchdown. And that was a nice drive and just what we wanted uh, to be up 7-0. In fact, the 10-play, 68-yard drive, the longest touchdown scoring drive of the year, Coach. Luke uh, Phillips has a nice extra point and uh, kind of puts the cap on, on the drive. And the momentum is firmly on the Cowboys' side. That score came with just less than six minutes left to play in the first half, and the defense continues to get it done. Knowles, uh, uh, their quarterback was a good competitor here. Terrence Robinson delivers a strong blow, and he still uh, wriggles out of the grasp. Punting this, time, big play time, Coach. This punt uh, is, is pressured, and they have been all, uh, all day, and then uh, T.D. Bryant gets it loose and uh, comes down here. If he, uh, um, if he hadn't, hadn't tuckered out at the end, we may have got him in the end zone. Two plays later. As you get another look at the return, boy, a big hole for him to run in, huh? I want you to know he is uh, fearless, and that's what you need in a punt returner. He handles the ball surely, and uh, uh, he'll run it. And just a couple of plays later, Asso Pogai, his first touchdown pass of the season and the first career touchdown reception for Rashawn Woods. You know, I didn't know that. I mean, you know, it's the first time we've been together, and I, I thought that uh, he had had uh, touchdown receptions before. But he's having a big night, and... Uh, um, we're, we're thankful that he got his first touchdown on that throw. That was his 56th career reception at Oklahoma State. He had 10 catches on this night for 144 yards, 31 catches for the season, and you're feeling good at 14-0 at half. Well, what has to happen at halftime is we have to come back onto the field and take the game back over, and really that's what I was happy with. 14-0 is a uh, score at halftime is probably the least important score that there is in the game. So. Boy, as a reference point, Northwestern State with a football to start the second half. This team had 447 yards against TCU last week and just 185 against your squad. Um, our defense is playing well, and as you can see, they, uh, you know, they take away the quarterback there. They, they shovel it underneath, make a nice play on the uh, shovel. And again, the punts are consistently pressured. We get a short punt and a shank to the left in, in good field position. Cowboys on the first play. Of that driver, Sean Woods with another big reception. He is a strong, tall, sure-handed receiver, and, and we're, uh, uh, we're going to do more things like this with him in the uh, upcoming weeks. A good night throwing the football for Osso Pogai. He was 18 of 23 for 195 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and the Cowboys on their way down the field for what would be his second scoring pass of the night. Another solid offensive drive. Tim Burrow in relief of Mike Denard at fullback with a nice evening. Tim had a nice night. He, he blocked for us well and, and ran the ball you know, well, and we're, we're thankful. This is a big catch by Willie. Willie Young picks up a first down going in. And uh, it was a uh, good, you know, this is um, Mark Milosevic's first touchdown, career touchdown, and a nice uh, call. Uh, Mike Gundy in the press box makes a, a, a great suggestion here, and obviously uh, our tight end's wide open. And you like to utilize that tight end, don't you? I like to score touchdowns. I don't care if it's a tight end, a <laughs> wide receiver, or the running back. Cowboys in command up 21-0 in the third quarter. In fact, those three touchdowns, Coach, I don't know if you knew this, came over about an 11-minute span where your offense really had some good work. Well, I felt like the momentum had changed and uh, we were coming after them. I think they knew that, that they were not going to have the day that they needed on offense. And uh, this is a great play by Marcus Jones. The ball was tipped twice and uh, he got up in the air and brought it down. And now we have good field position again. Excellent field position. Here's another look. Not just one swat of the ball. A Waylon Brown's a guy you saw get a paw on it. It's hit again. and. Good alertness by Jones to get the pick. I, I believe, was that Levels that knocked that ball? If he had just got up in the air, he'd, he'd intercepted that ball, <laughs> wouldn't it? Nonetheless, it's a good play by your defense. It gets you a first and goal at the 10. Cowboys trying to get more points on the board, leading 21-0. Tatum Bell runs into a wall there, but here in a moment we see also Pogai with some versatility. First a penalty, though, for the Cowboys. See, the that's penalty the is, that's the thing we have to eliminate in this offense. And, uh, um, Oslo sees an open gap on the left side and, and gets down inside the five and um, we toss it to um, Tatum and uh, we don't get it blocked cleanly. We have to kick a field goal and Luke Phillips has been good for us all year and continues to be so. Cowboys wrap up the victory and there's a nice scene, the singing of the alma mater which signifies a victory. It's a great time for us to celebrate uh, the end of that game. You'll only see that scene after victories at home. General thoughts on the victory, Les? Something that we had to get accomplished. Uh, our, our team uh, uh, took steps and strides towards preparing for the Big 12 Conference. 
The defense has been a key for the Cowboys, not only in the Northwestern State victory, but throughout the course of this year. A big reason for their play has been the work of new defensive coordinator Bill Clay. He's been around the game more than 30 years, and you'll get to know more about him when he talks to our Tom Dorado on the Two Minute Drill next. Welcome back. As you know, the Cowboy defense has been rock solid since day one under the direction of veteran coordinator Bill Clay. Tom Dorado visits with Bill on this week's Southwestern Bell two-minute drill. Well, Bill, 30 years in the college coaching business, what's kept the fire burning? Well, the game has changed uh, a great deal, Tom. I mean, it's when I first got in uh, college coaching or just coaching in general, almost everybody was into the running game, and now the passing game is uh, used so extensively and different from that time. It's it's something new, almost not just yearly; it's almost daily. So it keeps you you uh, working all the time, trying to stay ahead of the game or to keep up with it. You talked about the landscape of college coaching perhaps changing, college athletics in general changing. How have you changed? Well, uh, you know, you have to you have to be able to adjust, and uh, you can't get set in your ways. And that that I like uh, I like that part of it a lot. And you said it keeps you young. You probably look at me and not think that I'm young, but it <laughs> makes you think young. You know, yeah. you. You have to keep up with what's uh, what's working or what offensive teams are doing currently, and uh, understand it totally, and be able to have a good plan to counter those things. And that keeps you busy. That keeps uh, keeps us all busy trying to keep up with what's going on in the game and how to stay ahead of the game. X's and O's, offenses and defenses, they, they run in cycles. I think we've seen that over the years, over the decades. Uh, I guess you've seen just about everything you can possibly see on a blackboard, or right. now on a what, whatever they call that board now, a dry right. board. Well, it's a grease board. There now. you go. Yeah, the dry erase board that we have today. But the running game has uh, stayed fairly constant. I mean, there's just so many things you can do in the running game. Of course, people are creative in all phases of the game. But where the biggest changes have come, in my opinion, are in the passing game. I mean, the influences of or the influence of the pros. Uh, spread offenses, uh, when I first started coaching, you may have one check in case somebody spread out on you and that would be it for the day. And it may not happen at all that day, but today when you go into a game you expect spread team, or teams to spread you out and you better have several different ways of handling that spread because uh, if you can only handle it one way they can pretty much take advantage of you. Whenever you decide to retire, whenever that day is, and start coming to games as a fan, watching them on TV, how would you like to be remembered by the people that you've run across in the coaching profession? Well, one that uh, what, whoever I coached, whether it be my individual position, or if I was responsible for the overall defense of a football team that, that uh, the personality of that position that I coached or the personality of the defense that I coached would be that they played really hard and played really smart and that would uh, I think that would be most coaches wish that uh, you, you can talk about well my teams do this my teams do that but when they actually run out on the field you want them to be well prepared and the, and the number one ingredient of being well prepared is that they learn early in your association with them that nothing short of their best effort will will ever be acceptable. You jumped at the chance to join this new staff here at Oklahoma State. I, I jumped at it because I think it's an excellent opportunity. I think it's in one of the top conferences in the country and uh, basically is in a position to be built to what it can be built to and I wanted to get in on the ground floor of that with Les Miles and the staff that he was bringing in here. I just think that, uh, you know, the facilities that are here and that are being built and the talent that's available in the surrounding area, uh, if we do an intelligent job of selecting our athletes that we bring in here on scholarship, 
I think that we can build a winning program here, and I don't think it'll take a long, long time. As young as I am, it's hard for me to imagine these days, but that's not your leather helmet that you have in your... In your well, Did I, you wear that leather I, helmet? I, I've worn a leather helmet, believe it or not, but it was way back when I was in the seventh grade, and for you people that can count backwards really well, <laughs> that was 1952. And uh, you told me that uh, you had an unpleasant experience with that leather helmet. Huh? You almost got out of football. Yeah, well, I, I lined up every day in front of a guy that was about three inches taller than me and a little bit stronger and in the ninth grade. And his number one technique was to stand and swing an elbow, <laughs> which normally caught me somewhere around that leather headgear. So it, it was pretty discouraging for a year or so. That uh, leather helmet that uh, uh, Bill was wearing uh, looked like it protected him well over these years. <laughs> uh, he's uh, done a great job with our defense. Uh, his opinion uh, is uh, respected by the staff, and uh, we're really glad that he's on our team. Boy, the numbers on defense have been pretty darn good. Just 61 points allowed in four games by the Cowboys. And remember, two touchdowns were not the defense's responsibility. One on a blocked punt, another on a fumble return. The numbers have been good. We'll have some final thoughts with the coach when the Les Miles Show continues after this. Welcome back to our show. Coach, during the fourth quarter of the football game against Northwestern State, we had a chance to see some freshmen with some significant playing time. Josh Fields came in at quarterback, uh, was three of six, uh, operated the offense effectively. Uh, you can see that there'll be a future in, in football for him. Uh, Billy Badgema came in, uh, took some snaps, and uh, uh, we need him to be, be a little bit more seasoned as we go into the remainder of the schedule. Greg Jones came in at tailback, uh, took a couple of snaps, and, and, and it, it provides us with the opportunity to get uh, repetitions for those guys that are going to provide uh, the depth that we're going to need going into the remainder of the schedule. All right, Les, speaking of the remainder of the schedule, non-conference is over. It's nothing but Big 12 the rest of the way. Your thoughts on where your football team is as you approach the most challenging part of your schedule? Uh, each week our team has got to be better than it, it was the week before. Uh, we took a necessary stride in preparation for, for the Big 12 conference or the remainder of the Big 12 Conference. Um, uh, it must continue. Uh, we, we, we keep taking positive steps, offense, defense, and special teams. Um, we can be just where we need to be. Next week, the Cowboys in Missouri kick off at 7 o'clock on Lewis Field. Thanks for watching the Les Miles Show.